just the radio program for you. It's I'm Living Well with your host, Carolyn Haley. Heard weekly on KKNO Radio, 750 AM, Tuesdays and Thursdays at 9 o'clock AM to help you turn the page and open a new chapter with the weekly broadcast, special guest, discussions on healthy eating, sleep disorders, over and under weight management, exercise, fitness, community resources, and more for a healthier and happy you. Tune in each week on KKNO 750 AM, Tuesdays and Thursdays, 9 o'clock AM, for I'm Living Well, It's Time. Good morning, good morning, and good morning. Yes, what a wonderful day it is. Thank you for joining me again on today. And of course, you've tuned in to the I'm Living Well radio broadcast heard right here on KKNO 750 AM each Tuesday and Thursday morning at 9 AM. Also on K107.1 FM. Yes, you heard it right. We're on 107.1 FM now. You can also live stream us or YouTube us at KKNO750AM.com. I'm your host, Carolyn Haley, and again, thank you so much for joining me. There are many other things that you could be doing right now, but you are right here for such a time as this. Well, today again, a very, very special guest, as we have each and every time here on the I'm Living Well radio broadcast. Now. Approximately a week or so ago, you heard Apostle Kevin Adams, and he was talking about developing a healthy soul. Well, thank God for his favor, because that's who we have again with us today. It's Apostle Kevin Adams for part two. Now, I know that part one, those of you who heard part one, I know that you were so immensely blessed and the reason I know that is because many of you told me you were. So, and I know that I was. So I have Apostle Kevin Adams back again with me today. I want him to introduce himself again for those who may not have heard the last broadcast. He's gonna tell us a little bit about himself and then he's gonna summarize a little bit of what we talked about on last time. Good morning, Apostle Adams. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Happy to be with you guys again. Um, thank God for his grace um, and everything that he's done in my life. Thank God for this opportunity once again. Um, as you guys know, I told you guys the first time, um, we love the people of God. We uh, have a vision for the people of God. We want the people of God to be healthy uh, mentally, uh, physically, financially, every area of their life. So. We just thank God for the vision that he's given unto us, and now we have an opportunity to extend the word of God so many people can hear and they can grow in God's grace. Amen. Amen. Now, on last time, Apostle Adams, we were talking about developing a healthy soul. And I'm telling you, you just rocked us with the word and just broke it down to... Uh, a, a level that anyone could understand and that's what I love about your teaching method is that you make it plain just as Jesus did so on last time you were telling us what it meant to have a healthy soul and a little bit about the term soul and mind and heart and spirit because as we talked about before those words are many times used interchangeably so just in brief today, can you again tell us what is a healthy soul? Um, once again, when we look at the word of God, um, as I said, I think before that Jesus has saved our, our spirit. And I think sometimes as, as believers, we don't always, sometimes we look at those terms and we think they're the same, the spirit and the soul, but there is a difference. Uh, the book of Hebrews chapter number four, verse number 12, talks about the division between the spirit and the soul and so the spirit is the part that got saved that you have communion and fellowship with God um, where the Holy Spirit lives um, but the soul is the part that didn't get saved that must constantly be renewed day by day and so the soul is the seat of the personality it is the mind it is the will it is the emotions it is the volition it is the imagination of a man and so if we're going to prosper as the people of God it, it, it is very important 
uh, that we be renewed in our soul or in our minds daily daily and not just one time a day but it's a constant renewal it's a constant renewal and as we the bible says we receive the word of grace we're constantly built up we're constantly built up and so the bible also says in the book of colossians chapter number three as we feast on the word of god and we set our affection on things above and so that is something that we must do it's not something that that god is going to do for us he says look you do it you set your affection on things above so as we continually feast on god's word as we continually uh look upon jesus and the work that he's done on calvary's cross then we are going to see ourselves prosper in every area of our life and so this prosperity is not just meant for us when we get to heaven but he's teaching us how, how to live here uh, in the earth. Wow, wow, that is so wonderful. So here we see when we're talking about the soulish realm and Apostle did such a wonderful job of describing the difference, the born again, the spirit where, where the Holy Spirit lives, that perfect part, but then there's the soul, the mind, the will, the volition, the imagination, where feelings are, all of those things. That is the part that he said, and I want us to really home in on this, that has to be renewed day by day, day by day. Renew our minds, renew our minds. The word of God over and over tells us the work that has to be done in our mind, in the soulish realm of our being. The other part is that uh, he alluded to is that you have to do this. You renew your mind. I know that we're accustomed to telling God, go into the hospital rooms and go and feed the hungry and go and do, we are accustomed to ordering God and the Holy Spirit around. But here it is that they want us to know that God, the Holy Spirit, is the one, the commander. He is the one to guide us and to lead us. And here he says that we have to do this. We are to do this. So apostle, how do we do this? The last time you alluded to some things that we have to do to develop our soul or to train our soul, just in brief, what are a few of the things that we have to do in order to develop that healthy soul or to train it? Well, the Word of God says in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter number 2 that we have the mind of Christ. We have his spirit. We have his nature, his DNA. And so we have his mind. And in another portion of Scripture in the book of Philippians, he said, let this mind, let this mind. Let this mind, this mind, the mind that you received when you were born again. And so one of the things is we have to yield to the Holy Spirit. I see sometimes posts on Facebook and, and sometimes people say the Holy Spirit will make you do this, this and that. Well, I, I know what they're implying, but the Holy Spirit really doesn't make you do anything. The Holy Spirit will prompt you. The Holy Spirit will speak to you. But you have to yield to the Holy Spirit. And so we have to train uh, our souls to yield. We have to train ourselves to yield. When we hear the voice of God, we hear him speaking, we have to yield. And if we don't yield, we're going to run into this, 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 and that. And so that's what we have to wrap in, in the soul. See, the, the way that we put it is that the, the Spirit is king that the, the soul is a servant and that the body is a slave. And so what happens is your soul needs a master. It needs a commander. And so when you allow the Holy Spirit to have dictatorship over your soul, you're going to find out that you're going to walk in everything that God has for you. You're going to find out that you're going to walk in righteousness, peace, and joy. You're going to walk it out. See, all the things that, see, all the things that we have as believers have been given unto us by the grace of God. They have been given unto us. They've already been implanted as a seed inside of our spirit. So the working out process, he says, I want you to do when you yield to the Holy Spirit, when you begin to obey the Holy Spirit, you begin to work out your salvation. You work out that which has already been placed on the inside of you. Where? In your spirit. So as you yield to the Holy Spirit, you find out those things are going to be manifested through your soul and you're going to see it in your body. You're going to see 
see the fruit of it in your body and in every area of your life. So yielding is a very, very important point. We have to train ourselves to yield. It's a continual thing because at times we don't feel like yielding. This is demonstrated by Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. He yielded. Remember, remember now, he's feeling there's a struggle in the garden where he's feeling the pressures of the world. He's feeling the weight of sin. He's feeling all those things. But ultimately, he says, you know what? Not my will. He goes through this talking about the cup, the cup of suffering. He says, Father, I'm paraphrasing. If there is any other way that we can get this done, I mean, can, mm -hmm. can, can, do I have to do it this way? And sometimes we're in that battle constantly. Do I have to do it this way? The battle of knowing that our spirit is saying this, but our soul is saying something else. And so when Jesus made the decision to yield, the Bible said that an angels were sent to strengthen him. And so the minute you begin to yield, no matter what you feel, as you yield, you'll be strengthened by the grace of God. And you're going to walk into God's perfect will for your life. Hallelujah. My God. Now, I, I love this uh, method that he uses of helping us to kind of like remember what the parts are and how it works. He says the spirit is king, the soul is servant, and the body is the slave. Mm -hmm. Now, if we can keep that perspective in mind when we are walking it out, we will be less likely to yield to the slave and to the soulish realm. We understand neither one of them are, they are not in control. They should not be in control. There is only one that should be in control and that is the spirit, the spirit of God. God just flooding in who he is. And he says, we have to work it out, work out our soul salvation, train ourselves. What do we, how do we develop that healthy soul? key. It's not a whole lot of steps involved here. Train ourselves to yield. When we yield, then God begins to fill us with all the fullness of who he is. That, that's our desires, that God would just fill us up with everything that he is. Well, if we got junk there, y'all, if we got our will there, if we have our way there, apostles say, he, he can't do what he needs to do. Mm -hmm. Amen? That, that, that's the part. That, that's the volition. That, that's the part where, where you're going to have to make a decision. That, this is going to be very, very simple. We have really complicated um, the, 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 the life of the believer um, sometime out of mixture. Um, when Jesus made an open show uh, of Satan, when he, when he nailed the principalities, powers, he took away the law, he empowered us for victory. He restored us. He put us back in the place that Adam was before the fall. We have so much anointing. We have so much power. We have so much victory. But, but the problem is we're not choosing it. If you go back to the book of Deuteronomy, he says, you know, I've set before you this day, life and death, good and evil. Then he tells us, choose life. And so a lot of things that we pray about, we, we end up coming, we end up fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. I'm just using it as, as a, we end up fasting three days, three nights. I've been fasting and praying. And then you still come out and make bad decisions, or I want to say decisions that are contrary to the will of God. So after you pray, so most of the time we get into a lot of ceremonial, religious experiences, and we never see those things walk out in our life, and then the world doesn't get to see those things displayed. And so they're questioning, are you really saved? No, the question is, no, the answer is we are really saved. We're saved in our spirit, but the problem is we're not trained to renew our mind. And so we don't see the perfect will of God, and the world doesn't see the perfect will of God. And so a lot of things when it comes to the believer, when you are filled with the knowledge of God's will, now you have a decision to make. When the word goes over your life, you have a decision to make. There is no demon. There is no devil that is, in other words, your mind is not controlled by Satan. You have been free. You've been translated into the kingdom of God's dear son. You've been given authority as a son. So Satan is not controlling your mind. You are in control of your mind. I want you to understand that today. God has not given unto you the spirit of fear, but power, love, and a disciplined mind. You are in control. And when you make the decision, when you say, hold on, wait a minute, I have authority. The reason why I'm making these decisions 
in relation to my uh, 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 relationship or even my diet, what I'm putting in my mouth. It's no demon. It's no demon making me eat this. I am simply yielding to what I feel. I'm simply yielding to the suggestions that's coming inside of my mind. And so a lot of things are going to be what you're going to yield to. Who are you going to choose today? And so either you're going to choose the spirit or you're going to choose the flesh. A lot of things that we demonize in the church are not even demons. We've had people cast, I, I, don't, I believe in demons, okay? I've cast demons, I believe. But I'm saying for the believer, a lot of things are not even demons. A lot of them are decisions. There are decisions that we have made. There are things that we have made the decision to yield ourselves to that end up becoming strongholds in our mind. And watch this. And the stronghold is not going to be broken by you crying. And sometimes it's not going to be broken by me laying my hands on you. I will lay my hands on you. But I am telling you, when you leave, you're going to have to make the decision. And so a lot of believers don't want to do the work in the area of the soul as far as making the decisions that are going to please God and they're going to ultimately free you to live your best life as a believer. That's what he died for. Whom the Son has set free is free indeed. You are so free that now you have to train your mind, train your thinking. Now God is it's, it's available for me. Now I'm going to have to think like it. And so it's a constant battle of, 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 of the war in the soul, of the war in the soul, and of you making decisions that please God. Wow, wow. That's all I can say is wow. Get this. It's a decision, not a demon. I know that we want to <laughs> demonize everything. Everything that we choose not to have control over or everything that we give in to and you know, you've heard the saying, oh, the devil made me do it. No, <laughs> no, the devil didn't make us do it. We chose, we made a decision. It was not a demon. So thank you for that, Apostle. <laughs> you know, so we have to understand that these are decisions that we are making. Amen? Mm -hmm. Now, the next thing is that uh, do born-again believers control or have the power over their mind. Now you talked a little bit about that mm -hmm. uh, just then, mm -hmm. but do we actually possess that power or control over our mind? Yes, yes, it's been, it's been, it's been given uh, unto you uh, by Jesus. And that's what he's letting us know. He said, listen, <laughs> You receive my mind. The Bible says we have the mind of Christ. And so you have a new nature. You have a new man. You have God's DNA. You have his mind. And so now he's just saying, let this mind say, let me. And that's the thing. The Holy Spirit is a gentleman. He's not going to. And that's why I'm, I'm, I want the people of God to, to get this point that he's not going to make you do anything. He's not going to make you. You heard the voice. You heard his word. His job is to lead you. But ultimately, you, you have to make that decision. And so, yes, we have the mind of Christ. We have his power. We have his DNA. And we're not, we, we have been empowered to make righteous decisions. We have been empowered to make righteous judgments. We have been empowered to think according to his will and his plan for our life. So, yes, we've been empowered to do these things. And, we, and, and that must become our conviction. They have a movie called The Devil Made Me Do It. Uh -huh. You know, and what I've learned, and there's another song, William Murphy says, he says, you know, he says, I apologize, um, all those silly lies. He said, I just really need to make up my mind. Wow. And so everything in your life will begin to change. You knowing who you are, knowing what you possess, knowing the power that you have. And so today, I'm free to make a decision. Wow. I've been liberated from the prison of sin, and I've been liberated from that. I, I'm free to make a decision now. I don't belong to say I'm no longer a slave. I am free to make a decision now. And so it starts today, not when you get home, not when you have a conversation with your coworkers. It starts today, right where you are. I don't care what situation that you are in. I don't care what illegal relationship that you are in. I don't care what you're going through in your body. It starts with a decision. You're going to have to choose to believe what God says. And when you make that decision, I believe what God says about me. I believe in the power that he has given unto me. I believe.
believe that I have power, love, and a sound mind. I possess all of the qualities of God, the nature of God. When you start believing that and when you start saying that over your life, when you start saying what God is saying about you and not just what you feel about you, you're going to start seeing your life change in every area. Wow, wow. That is so, so awesome. So awesome. And it leads actually right into uh, my next question. What part does feelings play in the life of a believer? Man, uh, that's a, a real good question. Um, and see, it, it really just depends. When we start dealing with feelings, um, some are good, <laughs> some are not so good. And so it kind of just depends on the circumstance or the situation. Um, a man has certain feelings for his wife. Uh, these feelings are lawful <laughs> when, a man is, when a man and woman are married. The feelings are lawful. You know, they're good. They're, and then on the, on the other side, um, you think about when people die. Um, their, their feelings of, of, of you know, you, you mourn, you feel a, a doom and gloom, sometimes you're, you're saddened. Um, these emotions are, are all appropriate. You know, God gave the children of Israel 30 days to mourn. Now, now when it goes over the, the, the proper, I'm going to say, the, the, the period, you know, now you start getting into anxiety. Now you start getting into uh, hopelessness. Now you, and so I would say it just depends on the situation um, that we have been given uh, feelings. Uh, and in the proper situation, you know, they're, they're good. When, when, for instance, you know, when you receive favor and, and there's a promotion uh, on your job, you, you, you feel good about that. Mm -hmm. that that's lawful. There's, that, that's no sin. And so I'm going to say it just depending on the situation uh, and the circumstance. There's something called inordinate affection where you're having the wrong feelings for something or, or you're having the, uh, a, a, a lustful feelings and it goes outside of the boundaries. And so we have to just make sure um, that it's in the proper boundaries, I want to say. And, and when they're in the proper boundaries, um, uh, they can actually be used for our good. Uh, but outside of the proper boundaries, then we can start being led by our feelings and led by our emotions. And that's, that's not how God designed us to be. So we have emotions, we have feelings, but we're never just be led by those emotions or their feelings. We're always led by the Spirit of God. And so we have, have to also learn how to manage our emotions. Like, you know, the Bible says, be angry, you know, but, but, but sin not. And so the feeling of anger, you know, is going to come, you know. And so when we start dealing in the realm of emotions, if someone comes and they slap you or, or someone comes and they call you out of your name, uh, you know, emotional intelligence, say, well, how did that make you feel? You know, how did that make you feel? That made me feel angry. It made me feel bitter. I felt like I was disrespected. None of those things are sinful. Mm -hmm. now, now, it's just now if you start now, now if you say, well, I'm going to do this now. You know, they made me feel like this. Now I'm going to curse them out. Mm -hmm. They made me feel like this. Now I'm going to get a gun and shoot. Are you see what I'm saying? Yes. And so we have to be trained. We have to be trained. I mean, you know, as believers, sometimes we've been trained that every emotion um, is, is sinful, but that's not so. So I would say we have to have balance with it. It depends on the situation and the circumstance. We go, it's very, very broad. Amen. Okay. Amen. I actually heard you uh, teach on emotional management. Uh -huh. And that has to be a part of how we re not react, but how we respond. Uh -huh. Again, as, as born again believers, whether you're a born again believer, my dear listener, whether you're a born again believer or not, emotions have to be tempered. Yeah. They have to yes. be managed. Yes. And we can never be led by our emotions. It comes back to who are we yielding to? Yeah. If God gave us those feelings for a reason, mm -hmm. feelings in and of themselves are good. Mm -hmm. But yielding to every feeling yeah. is not good. <laughs> right. We, right. If we're going to yield, we should be yielding to the Holy Spirit. Right. I mean, there are times when, when I feel good about something that's not the will of God. Mm -hmm. And if I make a decision based off of that emotion in the moment, <laughs> I'm going to be led in the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. And the thing about feelings is that feelings are capable of changing. 
that, that oftentimes feel they don't have a real a true foundation. And see, God's word is very sure. His word is sure. He, he's not changed his word or what he says. He looks over his word and he watches his word to perform it. And so when you trust God's word, you know, you can stand, um, you can be certain about what you're standing on. But if you trust your emotions, then you get in a situation where you say, man, I thought it was the right thing to do. It felt like the right thing to go with. I thought, yeah, I, I felt good about it at the moment. And then three days later, like, I feel the worst about it now. Or, or man, I don't know what I did. And so it's very, very important that you are aware. Uh, uh, one of the things that you deal when we start dealing with the soul and we deal with emotional intelligence is self-awareness. Are you aware of what's going on with you? Are you actually aware? And so sometimes you can actually ask yourself the question, you know, how did that make me feel? You know, why, why do I feel this way? You know, all throughout the word of God, in the book of Psalms, David expresses his emotion. I love the book of Psalms because David, he's expressing how he's feeling. He said, he's going through this situation. He's like, why am I feeling this way? I'm, I'm paraphrasing. Why am I feeling this way? And then he had to tell his soul at the end of the day, soul, hope thou in God. Amen. He is the help of thy countenance. And so so we have to remember in this Christian journey, we're going to have feelings. I mean, every day you're going to feel a way about something, but we have to manage those emotions and we have to train ourselves not to be led by our emotions, but to be led by the spirit of God. When you go to counseling and you go to counseling, you know, a counselor asks you, you know, how did this make you feel? It, it, it's, it's very important. I'm trying to be balanced with this. It is very important that you understand, you know, why I feel this way or, 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 or you know, how did that make me feel? Because sometimes we can find a trail or we can find a pattern mm -hmm. and see the only the only deficiencies we have as a believer are in the area of our soul. Wow. They're not demons. They're just soulish issues. Mm -hmm. They're soulish issues that we have to correct, that we have to deal with. Sometimes we have to navigate our way through them. Sometimes we have to talk about them at times. And so none of these things are, are wrong. We just have to make sure that we're managing them properly. Awesome, awesome. Uh, and that is just so, so very important. And you know, we're, this has been absolutely wonderful. And we're not out of word, as Pastor Sam would say. We're just running out of time. But one of the things I really want to touch upon, and, and this would be my final question in closing, is that uh, believers have been given the command to submit to those who have rule over them because they watch for your souls. Now, we've heard that kind of tossed around. In brief, what, is, what does that mean when it says because they watch over your soul? Uh, the, the word submit means to get under. And when it says it watch for your soul, another version says, you know, your spiritual life, um, your, your spiritual well-being. Mm -hmm. um, and so what it's saying is that um, get under, you know, get under. You know, it, there's a reason why, um, you know, God gives gifts, you know, unto men. And, and I think that... Um, everyone is going to have to learn uh, how to manage um, both their spiritual and their emotional life. But I do believe that God gives men gifts. We find that in the book of Ephesians chapter number four when it talks about the fivefold ministry. And the thing about it is there's one that, that, that sees constantly, that one that, that has been anointed to see, anointed uh, to hear. And they call, they're called our overseers. And so it's very, very important. And the overseer is, is not there um, to make you do such and such and thus. No, he's there to lead by example. And uh, if his life uh, represents the word of God, um, then we should follow our overseers and not make it difficult uh, for them. You know, sometimes people say stuff like, you know, I just outgrown the past. I just, I know more than the leader. You know, this. no, 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 no. You, you see, you see, God has given that leader a special set of eyes. He's actually been given grace to lead you in the right direction if he's striving lawfully, if his motivation is, is, is you know, to love the people of God and lead them like, like a shepherd and, and not to, to manipulate them. Then God has anointed that man in the favor that's upon that man or that woman. That favor, and you're connected to it, you should be prospering. And so the word prospering is not just, well, I just need some money. Well, I, I just need a word for the day. No, you're going to need a word for today. You're going to need a word for tomorrow. And so this is, this is a constant thing. We ought to be constantly submitting um, to those whom God has placed us under. Um, and, and, and then it says at the end, it says, you know, don't, don't make it difficult for them. Right, you know, right, when, right. you know I it, think we missed it, it, when, when, Don't make it difficult. You know, when people Amen. are... Uh, rebelling and when people believe that they know more and they see everything and, and I don't need the overseer, really you make it difficult 
uh, for the overseer, but you also make it difficult for yourself. Amen. Yeah, you end up you end up going through uh, unnecessary things, things Amen. that you don't have to go through. I know people say, if I wouldn't have, I didn't go through that. No, a lot of things you really didn't have to go through. God was Amen. trying to save you, was trying to preserve you. Amen. Bible said that God preserved Israel by the voice of a prophet. My and so we need to believe in our leader, the one that God has sent to you. You need Amen. to believe in them, and you need to honor them. If they're Amen. following God, they're consistently following the word of God, then you need to honor them and respect them Amen. as a voice over your life. Praise God. And it's a safe place to be. It's, it's, it's a safe, God has given us a, a safe place because he's given us pastors and leaders after his heart. Apostle Adams, thank you again so, so much. Listen, I want you to make sure that you get this information. You can follow him on Facebook at Apostle Kevin Adams Jr. or Kingdom Life Worship Center. Their web address is klifewc.com. Again, it's Kingdom Life Worship Center. They're out in Destrahan and they're in Slidell. In Slidell, they're at 1179 Fremont Avenue. I hope I'm saying that correctly. They're there on Sundays at 9 a.m. And then in Destrahan, they're at 13562 River Road in Destrahan on Sundays at 12 noon. Join me again next time, will you? God bless you. Are you ready to turn the page and close the chapter on poor health or lack of wellness? No need to fear. We have just the radio program for you. It's I'm Living Well with your host, Carolyn Haley. Heard weekly on KKNO Radio, 750 AM, Tuesdays and Thursdays at 9 o'clock AM to help you turn the page and open a new chapter with the weekly broadcast, special guest, discussions on healthy eating, sleep disorders, over and under 